My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 285. Please turn to it. Page number 285 and problem number 114 is what we are about to do. Problem number 114, let's take a look at it. Problem number 114. Tell you what, before we actually do the problem number 114, as it is given in the book, let's first take a look at a simpler version of the problem. And once we understand the simpler version, you will see that the problem that is, that is given in the book actually is quite straightforward, quite simple problem, once we understand what is going on behind the scene. Let's, let's, do, a simple, let's do a simpler version. Let's do a simpler version. So here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. I have some kids. Every morning I feed my kids for breakfast. I give them apples and bananas. Apples and bananas. Each child, each child gets apples and bananas in the ratio of 2 to 3. Let's keep it simple. Every child gets apples, every child gets bananas, and every child gets the apples and bananas in the ratio of 2 to 3. Are you with me? I told you, I tell you, that every morning, every morning, I distribute 20 apples and 30 bananas. 30 bananas. The question is very straightforward, the question is very simple. The question is, how many children do I have? How many children do I feed? every morning for breakfast if I distribute 20 apples and 30 bananas given the fact that each child gets apples and bananas in this ratio in the ratio of 2 to 3 now your first instinct might be your first instinct might be to simply jump to conclusion that if the, the ratio is 2 to 3 and if you give me out 20 apples and 30 bananas you must have had 10 children you must have had 10 children there are there are 10 children that's a very very natural thing to assume very instinctive thing to, uh, to, to think of However, that is not the case here. That may be the situation, but that is not something that is necessarily true. And here's the reason for it. You see, what we're dealing with here is apple. What we're dealing with here are apples and bananas. We are told that they are given in the ratio of 2 to 3 to each child. And we're also told that they have to distribute 20 apples and 30 bananas. So you might think that we multiply by 10, we must have had 10, 10 children. But what we are doing wrong here is that, what we are doing wrong here is that, listen carefully, what we are doing wrong here is that we are dealing with items, we are dealing with apples and bananas, and we are not dealing with people, we are not dealing with children. For example, for example, if I were to tell you that in my class, the ratio of boys to girls, which is a very straightforward, very simple problem, if I were to tell you the ratio of boys to girls is 2 to 3, and I further go, further go on to tell you that there are 10 boys in the class. Well, if there are 10 boys in the class, then 10, 2 times 5 is 10, and there must be 15 girls in the class. And that's a logical conclusion. That is perfectly fine. We can do all of this here, because what we're dealing with here are boys and girls. We're dealing with people. Here, the information is presented to us in terms of apples and bananas, but the question is, in terms of people, how many children do I have? We cannot just assume that there are 10 children. Let's look at some possible scenarios, shall we? Let's look at some possible scenarios. Well, it is quite possible that uh, we may have only two children. Why two children? I'll tell you why. It is quite possible that we may have only two children because we are distributing 20 apples and 30 bananas. 20 apples and 30 bananas. Both 20 and 30 are divisible by 2. We can divide 20 by 2, we can divide 30 by 2. So it is quite possible that we may have only two children and each child gets 10 apples and 15 bananas, 10 apples and 15 bananas, that's one scenario, that is possible. 
Is it possible for us to have three children? It is not possible in this scenario to have three children because we cannot divide 20 by 3. 3 is not possible. Is it possible to have four children? Well, we can divide 20 by 4, but not 30. 4, 4 is not possible. But it is possible for us to have five children. It is quite possible that we may have five children, in which case each child is going to get four apples. Each child is going to get four apples, and 30 divided by 5 is six bananas. This is what each child is going to get, and there are five, five of them, times 5, times 5. There are five children, there are five children, each child gets four apples and six bananas, four times five is twenty, six times five is thirty. Is it possible for us to have six children? The answer is no, because we cannot divide, we can divide thirty by six, we cannot divide twenty by six. As we are assuming here that we are not giving out a third of an apple or a third of a banana, we are dealing with whole numbers, we are dealing with integers. Do you understand? Six is not possible, neither is seven, we can't divide these numbers by seven, neither is seven, neither is eight, neither is 9, and then finally it is possible for us to have 10 children. Now if we have 10 children, if we have 10 children, then instead of 4 and 6, they will get 2 and two and 3, just like the original one. So it is possible to, for us to have 2 children, it is quite possible for us to have 5 children in this scenario, it is quite possible to have 10 children. And of course there is always one more possibility, which is an absurd possibility, it is also quite possible that we just may have, we may have had just one child. Just one child, of course, in which case that child every morning is consumes 20 apples and 30 bananas. Yum, yum. Do you understand? Now that you understand the problem, let's do what is given in the book. And you will see that it's very simple. In the book, in the book, instead of, instead of apples and bananas, we have three items. We have pencil, we have pen, pencils, and pad. Pen, pencils, and pads. Pens, pencils, and pads. Pen, pencil, and pads. And we are told that everyone gets, everyone gets, X pencil, X pens, Y pencils, and Z pads. But that's not, that's, not, that's not relevant, you understand? The question again is very straightforward as to how many people we have. How many people do we have is the question. Let's see what else do they tell you in the question itself. That's it, that's all they tell you. Let's look at the first statement. In the first statement they tell us that we are distributing this, these, these, pep, uh, these pe pe pens, pencils and pads in the ratio of 2 to 3. Everybody gets, or rather 2 to 3 to 4. Everybody gets, everybody gets 2 to 3 to 4. The pens, pencils, and pads. Pen, pencils, and pads. Is that enough? Simply knowing, simply knowing the ratio of the three items that everybody gets, just like the previous example, if simply knowing that every child gets the apples and bananas in the 2 to 3 ratio, is that enough for us to tell how many children there were? Obviously not. Same thing here. We cannot tell how many people there were. Of course, we know better now. We know, the, we know we understand the problem, and we understand the whole thing here. The trick that they're trying to pull here is that. Actually, not that this is not enough. This is completely irrelevant. We need to know, but well, we'll see. But this by itself is not enough. Even if we knew what, I'm what I meant by completely irrelevant is that, what I meant by that remark that it's completely irrelevant is that, even if we knew the exact number of pencils and, pa pencils and pens and pads being distributed, that still would not be enough to figure out how many people there are. Because these ratios are dealing with the ratios of the items and not the people. The first statement is not enough. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we have established that the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now that the answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be either B, C, or E. Let's see what they tell us in the second statement. In the second statement, they go on to tell us that we distributed a total of, we distributed a total of, There is our pencil, pen, pencil, and, 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 and pads in the, in the ratio of 18, 27, and 36. Now what they want you to think, what they want you to think is that 2 is 9 times 18, 3 is 9 times 27, and 4 times 9 is 36. 
they want you to think that there are nine people there. They're, they're hoping that you will come to conclusion, you will jump to conclusion instinctively that there must have been nine people. But of course we know now, we know better, because we did the simpler version, that nine, nine is not impossible. We're not saying that nine is not a possible scenario. Nine is possible, but there is only one of the possible scenarios. That does not need to be the only scenario. Let's look at some other possibilities, shall we? Okay. We don't have to make it so complicated in a real exam. We have to, in the real exam, if you want to keep it simple, you don't have to think of all the possible scenarios. Just think of two extreme scenarios. One extreme scenario is that we have nine people. Other extreme scenario is that we may only have one person. That's one person of the entire so-called staff. And that one person is going to get all of this thing. Another possibility is, so we can have one person. So now we're putting it together. We're putting the two statements together. If you were to put the two statements together here, Second statement by itself is not going to do anything. Simply knowing how many you distributed, I did not finish that thought here. I, I jumped ahead. Simply knowing how many items you distributed is not going to be enough to figure out the number of people we have. That does not do the job. But even if we put them together, even if we put them together, well, we know it's one possibility is that we may have only one person. Is it possible to have two people? The answer is no. We can divide 18 by 2, we can divide 36 by 2, but not 27. That's not possible. Is it possible to have three people? We can divide 18 by 3, we can divide 27 by 3. Oh, there you go. Oh, 3 is possible. We can divide 36 by 3. It is quite possible to have 3 people. And if there are 3 people, and we distributed 18 pens, which means each, must, which, each one of them must have gotten 6 pens. 6 times 3 is 18. Each person must have gotten 9, uh, whatever the C was, pencil. And each person must have gotten, each person must have gotten 12 pads. It is possible to have three people. Four is not possible. We can't divide four by any of these numbers. Five is not possible. Is six possible? We can divide 18 by six. We can divide 36 by six, but we can't divide 27 by six evenly. Six is not possible. Seven is not possible. Eight is not possible. And finally, nine is the final answer. And if the nine had been the case, then if, if we had nine, nine people on the staff, then everybody would have gotten two, two, two pens, three pencils, and four pairs. But as you can see, there are three possibilities here. We may have only one person on the staff, we may have three people, or we may have as many as nine people. So even putting the putting these two statements together does not get us anywhere. The answer is E. The answer is E. Let's go to the next one. Number 115. Enough of this. They were trying to pull a fast one, weren't they? They were trying to pull a fast one. And many people will actually fall for it. Many people instinctively will say, well, we must have had nine people. That is one possibility. Do you understand? Number 15. Number 115 says that X mix, X works for four hours. Works four hours and does part of the job. Then we told us that Y works for three hours and finishes the job. Does the rest of the job. The question is very simple. The question is how many more hours would X have taken if X had continued to work on the job and finished the entire job by himself? How many additional hours? How many additional hours would X have required to finish the job himself? Now I do understand that I'm referring to these to these things as himself, as people. They're machines. It's the same thing. Whether you look at them as machines or people, it doesn't make any difference. Let's look at the first statement, shall we? In the first statement, they tell us that X makes, they tell us that X makes 30 per minute. 30 per minute. Now, here's what's going to go on, okay? It tell, they tell us that X makes 30 per minute. Ask yourself logically, think logically, is this information going to be enough to figure out how many more additional hours would X require to finish a job by himself? Think about it think for a second. All we can figure out from here is, knowing that he makes 30 per minute, 
all we can figure out from here is how many he can make in four hours. We could do that, it'll be a waste of time, but if we could do that if you want me to, I'll do it. Not in the real exam, but here just to please you, I'll do it and figure out how many he makes, how many he makes in four hours. But then the question is, how many total units does he have? How many total units does he need to make? Knowing the speed of the other guy is irrelevant. It really doesn't matter how fast the other guy works. It makes no difference at all how fast the other guy works. We need to know how big the job is. How many units does the job contain? How many units comprises a complete job? That is the, that's the question. For example, we know that he makes 30 per minute. That implies that x makes, x makes 30 times 60 per hour. And therefore, x makes 4 times this amount, 30 times 60 times 4, per 4 hour. But we need to know the total units, t. Because we, until we know t, we know now that he has to make additional t minus this amount, 4 times 30 times 60. He has to make this many more units, total amount that he has to make minus the amount that he already made. Once we know the t, we can figure out how many additional units he has to make. We know his speed and we can figure out how many more hours, how many additional hours he would have taken had he continued doing the job himself. But we don't know the total amount of work. Therefore, simply knowing the speed of the other guy really doesn't do anything. It's completely irrelevant. The speed of the other guy is completely superfluous. It's thoroughly gratuitous. Do you understand? The answer is, answer is that the first statement by itself is not sufficient. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is not sufficient, we know now that the answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be either B, C, or E. Let's look at the second statement. Let's look at the second statement. Just give me one quick break and then we'll get to the second statement. So everything that we learned from the first statement goes away. And now we look at the second statement from scratch. Second statement that tells us that X did twice as much work, twice as much in four hours. But that is very that is very very useful as Y did in three hours. The X did twice as much in four hours as Y did Y did in three hours. Now what does that tell us? Well, if X did twice as much work in four hours as Y did in three hours, that tells us, this tells us that X must have done, must have done two-thirds of the job. Two-thirds of the job. He must have done two-thirds of the job and Y must have done a third of the job. Therefore, now we know that X two-thirds of the job in four hours. So X can do, X can do two-thirds of the job in four hours we are told he took four hours that implies that X can X can do a third of the job third of the job in two hours X must have been, because he did two-thirds of the job in four hours that's what we are told he did twice as much work so whatever the work was he did two parts the other guy did one part so he did two-thirds of the work and he did two-thirds of the work in four hours well, if he can do two-thirds of the work in four hours, he must have been able to do a third of the work in two hours. Which means he can do the entire job. X can do the whole job, whole job in six hours. He can do the entire job in six hours. He has already worked four hours, of course. Actually, we don't even have to do all of this work. If he did two-thirds of the work, he needs to do a third more to go. Third more would have taken two more hours because he did two-thirds in four hours. If he did two-thirds in four hours, another third will take him another two hours. That's all. Second statement by itself does the job quite nicely. As you can see there, it's quite straightforward actually. The answer to this question is B. Answer to this question is B. Second statement by itself does the job quite nicely. The answer is B. That was it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.